Hi, everybody. This is Ibarian X from the Candid Frame. Last week, I received a comment about one of the videos in which I mentioned that I try to avoid the inclusion of text in my photographs. The reason I, I said that is that oftentimes I find that those those signs, those those advertisements, those billboards are often a distraction. And so I want to avoid including including them so that the viewer's eye is not pulled away from my subject, what I consider to be the most important element in the frame. But when I thought about it, I realized that signage, in whatever form that it takes, can sometimes be a matter of perspective, uh, especially with the perspective of time. I recently had the opportunity to look at a retrospective of the work of Walker Evans, who was a classic photographer from the mid-20th century. And uh, many of his images include text, which now, with the passage of time, provides such a context for the time that he was in. Uh, he photographed a lot of billboards, he photographed a lot of signage, which now, in retrospect, gives you so much insight into the places that he, that he traveled, where he photographed, the time in which... Uh, it, it, which took place, uh, the advertisements alone that would be on the side of these of these buildings really give you a sense of place. And I realized that, that signage can sometimes be a matter of, of perspective. And I want to suggest that maybe it's not such a hard and fast rule that you should always avoid it, but that you should be conscious of it and figure out what kind of role you want it to play in your photographs. And I cho chose four images here to illustrate that point. Okay, we start off with a shot by Bejane Levine. This was created with the Sony A9, 1 800th of a second, F11, ISO 400. Now, this is a wonderful shot with the conflagration of people uh, at this intersection with some really interesting gesture and light. But the, our eye immediately goes to the sign that this man is holding, advertising free tickets for Comedy Central. So my eye, despite all the other elements in the frame, immediately go to the text. So that's usually something that I really kind of want to try to avoid because I, I would think that it's more about, you know, the person that I'm trying to, to capture here. But this is part of what happens on that street. There are costume characters that are there soliciting for tips. Uh, there are a lot of neon signs advertising every kind of merchandise. You have the McDonald's sign in, in, the, in the background here. We have the M&M store in the background. There's a, a food cart off to the right. There's an abundance of stuff that exists in the scene. Even this woman's bag uh, advertising the Disney store is an element here. And in this case, I feel like all of this text, all of this signage, really plays a role in establishing a sense of place. Here, I don't see it as much uh, of a distraction as I normally would because I think about it in the context of the place and the moment that, that, that we're in here. You know, 20 years from now, there will probably still be a Times Square, but all of these things will take on a sort of different different air. I don't even know if Comedy Central is still going to be around for you know, the next 20 years or not, but it will be an indication of the time that we lived in at this particular moment. And I think that in that case, including this in the in the scene really helps. But look at the at the other things that are really making this shot effective. It's this great light to shadow contrast we have here. We have this wonderful gesture, not only by this fellow here, but this woman here who's holding on to her kids. We have this great color contrast that's happening here with the reds, the yellows, even this guy with this blue phone and this yellow uh, and this yellow shirt, which might normally be a real distraction here, kind of works for me. Um, we have the oranges, we have the reds. There's just a, a, a wonderful sense of color at play here, which would be completely lost if you went to a black, a black and white image. I think this image really is served by keeping it in, in color. But again, getting back to the point, it's, it's thinking about, okay, not just the text, but thinking about all the other elements that you're including in the frame and how they balance off of each other. And so in this case, the text doesn't dominate the frame. It becomes uh, an important aspect of the overall composition. Okay, here we have a shot by Brian Garcia. We have no XF data for this one. Now here, the road closed and detour sign become the heart of the photograph. 
not only because there's text, but because the sunlight is illuminating it and making it the brightest element in the frame. You can see the transition between light and shadow here, and you can see how the detour sign, the road close sign, are markedly brighter than the foreground here where we have this figure walking across the scene and uh, these areas of shadow here. Remember that the eye is always drawn to the brightest element in the scene and the area of greatest contrast, which is possessed by all of these things here. The eye is also drawn to pattern, and we have this pattern with these lines, with these stripes that pervade here. This is also the area of most sharpness. So all of those factors are leading the viewer's eye to look right here. And the viewer has to basically assumes that okay, this is the most important element in the frame. And the, the shot, the whole entire composition, is built upon this here. And in this case, the signage is of all importance. The human figure that's in the frame here is not really essential to the shot other than serving as a counterpoint, as providing something else to include in the frame so that it isn't just the sign, uh, just a photograph of just the, the, the signage. But you can see how the, the image is so much more weighted for the signage as a result of all the other things that are helping to draw the viewer's eye into the scene. The human character in, in, in this shot isn't as interesting as the one in the previous shot, where we have some really interesting gesture, um, some nice color play. You know, it's, it's not as balanced um, as the previous shot. And so at this point, this is where I'm trying to be careful with the inclusion of, of, of text in, in, in a shot, including of signage, because it has the tendency to want to, you know, possess more weight in, in a photograph. And I want to think, well, is that really the most important thing in the frame? Are there other things that I really want to consider in this frame that I want the viewer to consider when they're taking a look at the composition? If I'm not careful about that, it's going to be so weighted for the text and the signage itself that whatever other elements I choose to include in the frame get ignored or overlooked as a result of so much weight being associated with the text. So there's some interesting stuff here that I like. I like the, the, the stripes here, and they're mirrored somewhere in the, in the shoes here. And there's also some lines here and shapes here. You know, to my thinking, I would have loved to to find to find a way of building a shot where all these repeating lines, especially these diagonal and vertical lines, get built into a composition where they they riff off of each other. So that when a guy comes in with these striped shoes, somehow I, I'm able to complement that in, in in this in, in that way. Um, that's the kind of thinking I want to approach any time that I make a composition. Is like not thinking about just the main subject, but thinking about what other elements are in the frame and how can I get them to play off, off of each other in a way that they reinforce each other without pulling, pulling the image apart and making it fall apart because they're competing for the viewer's attention. Okay. Here we have a shot by uh, Andreas Mamukas. Uh, this was created with a Fujifilm X70, a 1 800th of a second, F11, ISO 400. Now, one of the things about signage that I, I did notice is that the text in, in a sign can be very informative, but it also can be a distraction if it's in the language that you're accustomed to reading. So if I see English signage and English text, I usually want to avoid including it for the reasons that I've just, I've just uh, illustrated. But when pictures are in a foreign country where the native language is something that I don't understand, at that point, that text becomes just another graphic element in the shot. And it gives me a sense of place. It gives me a sense of the location where, where it's at. So when I look at this shot here, uh, which I'm assuming was made in probably Greece, um, the sign is this advertisement for what seems to be like a movie or a television show or maybe a theater performance. Uh, doesn't have the distraction potential as other shots, right? It's providing me a sense of place. It's establishing the fact that, okay, this is not Los Angeles. This isn't the United States. It's elsewhere in the world, okay? So it provides me that valuable information in terms of where we are in the world. But again, like the first shot, look at how this composition works 
beyond simply having that text in the background. We have this wonderful gesture and shape of this figure moving across with this baby stroller. We have the play of color from the red here, the blue here, the pink of the shoes, the yellow stripe. We have the repeating patterns of shape that pervade the entire shot, shot including the, the, the shape here, these, these rectangles being repeated throughout the frame. We have these lines here throughout um, the walkway here. Just, just an abundance of stuff that makes for an interesting composition. So even if you didn't have that signage, the image would still be interesting. It's not, it's not so dependent on this, this, on this billboard or this advertisement to make the shot work. It becomes a secondary element, which balanced off with everything else, still makes for an interesting composition. So this is the sort of attention to detail that you as a photographer sort of have to practice when you do see text, when you do see advertisements. You have to make the conscious choice of, okay, do I include this or not? Uh, usually I'm very quick to eliminate these those things from the frame because more often than not, I find them as a, a distraction. But, you know, that comment is really giving me some room for thought about maybe reconsidering, you know, when and where I do include some of those elements in the frame. Now here we have a shot by Alex Hawley, uh, no XF data on this one. So here I think this is similar, similar to, the, uh, to the second shot in which the signage itself becomes really important to the shot. We have this psychic crystal tarot readings and then we have this other storefront here which has the word breakout here and then we have this humor figure, human figure coming into the frame. Now my eye immediately goes to the neon sign. Why? Because of the contrast between the colorful letters, the yellow, the pinks, the blues, the yellow, you know, quarter moon, and the dark black background. You can see there's some wonderful light that's just kissing the interior here. So there seems to be some sunlight probably coming to the, from the left that's illuminating this scene here. And it's illuminating the back of this woman's hair. And so my eye immediately goes to here. Why? Because one, it's text. To the contrast, the color contrast that exists there, the high contrast between light, and in this case the, the letters and the sign, and the dark of the background. So all of those things are helping to lead my eye straight here, right? And then my eye goes here because of the contrast between the black lettering and the white backdrop here. So now the human figure here becomes a secondary element in the shot. And it's not weighted as strongly for her, even though some of the yellow of her purse, the yellow of her hair, sort of mirrors some of the colors here. She becomes a very, not even a secondary element of the frame. She becomes such a small element of the frame, largely because um, these things here are, are so dominant. You know, as much as you stare at her, your eye immediately gets pulled here and here. So again, for me, it's like, okay, not only do I have to consider the inclusion of whatever text is gonna be included in there, I gotta start thinking about, okay, if I am gonna include a human figure, if I'm gonna have someone walking into the frame, how are they gonna play off of what's already dominant in that composition? You know, I don't know exactly what the lighting was here, but to my thinking, I probably may have, would have seriously underexposed this shot so that a lot of shadows would go really go black. It looks like uh, from, from the light here and here that you could probably have biased the exposure so that the area of shadow, like this area in her face, would have been appreciably darker, increasing the contrast and emphasizing only the areas of a subject that were illuminated by direct sunlight. You can see you have some dappled light here, and you can see on the bottom of the purse how it quick, quickly goes to shadow. You can see how her top goes to shadow here. So I probably would have exaggerated that even more and possibly also changed my camera position in order to to find a way of balancing out all those different elements. If I'm going to include a figure in my in my in my composition, even the fleeting figure of someone moving through the frame, I'm always going to be thinking about how can I leverage it. I I simply don't want to have just anybody walking through the frame just to have somebody walking in the frame. I'm going to be observing the color of their hair, the color of their outfit, what they're doing, and finding a way to create an image where I can get some sort of playful interactions between these disparate elements that normally have no relationship to each other, but within the context of the frame, really make it work. 
All right, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, it's a lot to chew on, but hopefully it gives you some food for thought the next time you go out there and you encounter signage or advertisements or billboards uh, in the backgrounds of your compositions. At least you can make a conscious choice as to whether or not you want to include that uh, in the frame. Now, as far as the Candid Frame Flickr group, we've got a lot of people submitting images, but one of the things I had been hoping to do is you know, create more of a, a, a dialogue and a communication, not only between me and you, but all the people who contribute uh, images. And there's a comment section in the bottom of, uh, of the Flickr group. And I, I have to be honest, I hardly visit it. Uh, I, I try to go there, but it's not an automatic thing for me to go down there and start going through it. And it's really hard to sort through all the different messages, especially if I'm kind of late to the game and responding to them. So don't think I'm not, I, I'm trying to ignore you. I really would like to dialogue with you a little more. More importantly, I would like you guys to dialogue uh, amongst yourselves. So my thinking is, um, We've had a Candid Frame group on Facebook, and um, I, I think it's time to start leveraging that for this Flickr community. Uh, what you can do is you can go to the can go to Facebook and do a search on the Candid Frame Photography Podcast Flickr group and just add to be added. It's not a completely open group because there were just a lot of spammers. They were ha have and continue to try and join the group and just pollute it with a bunch of garbage. Uh, I'm trying to avoid that, and uh, but. If you're really interested in in not only just posting pictures on Facebook, but you know creating dialogues and giving me ideas for guests for the show or or for these YouTube videos, I really would welcome them. And hopefully we can create more of a dialogue and more of a community in that group. So what you can do is you can go to Facebook, do a search on the Candid Frame group, or I'll put a link in the in the show notes below where you can click and you can ask to be added. And uh, I'll be glad to do so. Uh, it may take me a little while because I, mean, I suspect that we'll probably have more than the usual numbers asking to be added. And me and the producer for the show will go through them because we get a lot of fake Facebook accounts that try to get added to the group so they can put their you know, advertisements or spam in there. So we kind of take a look at it and figure out, okay, is this a real person or is this some bogus person that's just trying to pull data? Uh, I know not everybody is on Facebook and maybe a particular fan of Facebook at, at this particular time, but right now it's the, it's the best solution that I have in terms of being able to create a dialogue and community. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, click on the link below and uh, join us. And if you've not heard of The Candid Frame, The Candid Frame is a podcast in which I interview photographers about their work and career. And uh, I interview photographers every week, as well as post articles about different topics. Uh, this week I wrote about using a 28 millimeter lens for street photography. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, writing it, and I hope that some of you, especially those of you who are interested in street photography, uh, want to check it out. And if you want to find, a, find out more about The Candid Frame, you can do so by just simply visiting thecandidframe.com. So, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time. And if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs>